The following content has been provided by RWTH Aachen University. Um, one approach that is particularly sort of an extreme user involvement goes beyond just getting people in for the testing part. It's called participatory design, and what you do there is that you actually get people to be part, become part of the design team. So imagine you're designing a um, software for a new, um, I don't know, for a new kitchen out outfit, like you know, an amazing smart oven or something. So you would actually get people in who would be later users of this thing, maybe chefs in, in restaurants or something, um, and they would become part of your design team. They would be there during all the phases, not just every now and then to test your system. Um, so that's participatory design originated in Scandinavia where it's become a law for certain products to have this heavy user involvement throughout the design product, uh, process. Um, and then if you do that, of course, now you've got somebody in your team who knows nothing about user interface design. They are just a really good expert in you know, using the kind of system that you're about to build. Um, so you need to use those typical team communication things, brainstorming, storyboarding, we've already talked about, you will have to do workshops, interviews, maybe role plays, uh, paper prototypes. All these things will become very, very necessary to keep the team communication working. And um, participatory design is great if you can get hold of a user to really become sort of the person in the room all the time. It's like a real life persona, right? With the persona that we created was this paper, um, you know, prototype of a person, if you like. Um, with uh, you know, very concrete name and, and aspects and interests, but if we have a real person in the room, we can ask them, hey, do you think that's a good idea for our interface? You're the expert, right? What do you think? Um, but it is expensive, of course, right? You know, taking somebody out of their real job for a longer time is really uh, gonna take a lot of effort, gonna take a lot of money, um, creates a lot of you know, chaos in the, wherever they work. Um, and it might also conflict with client hierarchies. What do I mean? Um, well, <coughs> Let's say we're making that oven and we're getting that, that you know, the, the, the chef from the, um, from the, from the kitchen and to, to test it with us, but the manager of the restaurant where the chef is working, uh, he wants other things. He, he wants the, you know, his, his dishes to be made more quickly maybe, but the chef has the interest of making dishes, we have more time to prepare these dishes and make them to the best possible ways that he can. So there are different you know, interests at work here. Um, so sometimes the user that you design for is not the same person as the client that will pay your bill in the end. And that is an interesting conflict of interest that you can run into there. And the other problem, especially, I mean, the thing with client versus user is always true, but with participatory design, a particular problem is what you could call user conversion. Um, here, who here has heard of the Stockholm Syndrome? Oh, okay, all right. So, what is it? Um, that's um, a, situ a situation, well, for example, when someone was kidnapped and uh, was kept for so long time that uh, he, uh, turned, he or she turned into a relationship with the, the person whom he was kidnapped and uh, uh, the hate and the scare turned into sympathy. Mm -hmm. Exactly, very well described. So people who, you know, hostages basically start to sympathize uh, with their, um, you know, the people who captured them. Um, and a similar thing can happen in this situation. So if you have a, that chef, you know, in your team designing this new um, oven <coughs> for long enough, he will start learning from your design process. He will start thinking like a designer a bit more and at some point, he might lose his sort of um, unblocked, uh, clear, un, un sort of colored view of what he really does as an end user and might start thinking more like a designer. So it's a similar problem here um, that the user is not a real user anymore because he's been exposed to the design team so much that he feels more like a design team. In the end, he's like, but we need to ship this new oven and, and you know, I want to really make sure that this thing gets, gets, uh, gets, gets shipped and he might forget that he's really there to provide just the um, uncolored uh, view of an end user.
This content was provided by RWTH, Aachen University.